Hi everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tina. I'm the Capability Building Coordinator for Connecting Up and TechSoup New Zealand. Connecting Up is a not-for-profit organisation. Our purpose is to help fellow not-for-profits leverage the digital world to positively impact their communities. The digital world is expanding beyond IT, software, hardware and digital marketing to new innovative service delivery and measuring social impact. Connecting Up believes that not-for-profits with the right tools and skills can and do achieve great things for their communities. We have a long history of affordable software, hardware, educational events and group consulting. We partner with over 40 organisations to deliver high quality products and services specifically meeting the unique needs of the not-for-profit sector. I'd like to welcome you all to the webinar, How a Business Intelligence Tool Can Help You Make Educated Decisions in Workforce Management for Your Not-for-Profit, which will be presented by Olivia Macalino and Lindsay Whitbread from Data Spark Analytics. We'll start with a little bit of housekeeping. All lines are muted, so if you have any technical issues, please type it into the questions box on your webinar panel and I'll be able to assist you through there. If you have any questions, during the session, please also type it into the questions box and Olivia and Lindsay will answer them in the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. Please note that your comments and questions will not appear to the entire group. If you are on a Wi-Fi connection and have multiple programs open, this can sometimes affect the quality of the audio and video of the webinar. If possible, please close all other programs to help you have the best experience possible. Please note that the webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording and slides will be sent to you within two business days after the webinar ends. Before we start, I'd also like to remind you that there will be a short survey at the end of the webinar. We'd appreciate it if you took a few minutes to provide us with some feedback. That's all from me for now. I'll pass it over to Olivia and Lindsay to get things started. Thank you so much, Tina. Um, and thank you so much for everyone um, to attend. And um, yeah, we'll get started. Oh, just just before we get started, Tina, you were um, dropping out uh, for when you were speaking there for us. Um, I'm just interested in, if is that just us or um, uh, was everyone else hearing you drop out as well? Uh, thanks for letting me know. I'll keep an eye on the questions box and then people can let me know if things are dropping out or not. And then I'll, I'll be able to monitor it through there. Great. Cool. Okay, cool. So we'll get stuck into it now. Um, so today, yeah, we'll be talking about business intelligence um, and it's a bit of an exciting day for us. Um, so this is our Um, Olivia, sorry, you've dropped out completely. It says that your microphone is muted from your side. Can you hear us again now? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not sure what happened there. Okay, All right. we can hear you clearly. Going. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> All good. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not sure if everyone caught it, but um, so yeah, this is our new uh, business intelligence tool that we've developed for not-for-profits and it's called Visual Workplace Management uh, by DataSpark Analytics. So we'll be talking about it in more detail uh, further down the track. Uh, first of all, we'll go through our agenda so we'll let you know a little bit about us. Um, we'll go through step by step what business intelligence is, um, a few trends that have been coming up um, and what's going to be happening next year. Also, how does business intelligence apply to not-for-profits um, and a real world success story uh, that we'd like to share with you. And further down the track, we'll talk about the visual workplace management um, solution that we've developed for not-for-profits and also show everyone a demo of how it works. And we'll have a little bit of time left over at the end uh, for any questions um, and a bit of a discussion. So we'll launch into who we are. So DataSpark Analytics is an Adelaide-based company and we are Adelaide's leading Tableau partner. Um, so that's the software that we use for our business intelligence solutions. Um, but we do do work everywhere. So at the moment, uh, we do work all Australia-wide um, and also in New Zealand. So 
yeah, we're very much available. Um, so I'm Olivia and I started with DataSpark um, about middle of this year. Um, before that, I co-founded a uh, cloud integration business with my husband. So we did that for a few years together. And all I've have had about six years of uh, business development management experience. Um, my pa personal passions are helping others. I love the environment and I love gardening. And I'll let Lindsay tell you a little bit about himself as well. Um, hi, everyone. So, yeah, my name's Lindsay. I've uh, been working IT for a very long time. I'm horrified to see 18 years on that. And um, yeah, apart from coming up with uh, cheesy hobby lines in there, we've been working with not-for-profits for, -profits for uh, at least the last 10 years. And um, a lot of that's been in, in that technology space. Um, and yeah, the, the team and I are very excited about the opportunities that um, data analytics offers to not-for-profits. Um, through the work that we've done so far, we've seen really great examples of how um, these not-for-profit organisations, like the ones you work in, uh, can can be um, uh, seeing really great benefits. So I'm looking forward to um, being able to share this information with yourselves. Thank you. Um, so let's explain what is business intelligence. Um, so essentially. Business intelligence is the ability to take data, analyse it, and create insights out of that. Um, and that's a very simple way of putting it. But what that allows organisations to do is to look at patterns and trends, um, make better, better um, decisions for the organisation and for the people working in it, um, and therefore create organisational growth. So it has a flow on, a positive flow on effect. Um, there is a bit of a foundation that comes along with developing a business intelligence solution um, within a business. Um, so initially, the idea is to uh, digitise all of your processes, and that just means taking everything out of a paper-based system and putting it into a cloud-based um, software system. The next step with that is once you've taken all of your information and put it up in the cloud and selected various different software, um, you connect them all together, so um, integrate all of your systems, and then you have to find a home for all of that. So that's where data warehousing comes in. Once you have those three steps all put together and that puzzle is almost complete, um, you can then go into it and take all of the data out, and that's where you get your data visualisation, and that's what we specialise in. Um, going through this journey, though, there are many people who don't, take all of um, those steps and we do have the ability to take information from sort of more basic systems. Um, you don't have to have data warehousing um, in place. So we can customise it, um, but for an organisational benefit, um, it is best that you do have all of the steps in place to make sure that everything is running smoothly. Um, so we'll talk about a few trends um, that are coming up, um, obviously business intelligence is a relatively new thing. Um, so we've taken uh, the top three business intelligence trends uh, for what we think um, Australian not-for-profits and New Zealand will benefit from. Um, so the first one is, is to take actionable analytics um, and then put the data into context. And what that means is that having a look at moving away from interesting strategic dashboards towards more operational management. Um, so we're looking at trying to get um, systems to be improved rather than just measured. So not just looking at information just for the sake of looking at it, um, but also being able to go and navigate through the system. So if you've got, um, say, data where you've got something has spiked up and you see that, you know, someone has logged on 60 hours of work by accident um, instead of six for a day, um, you can click onto that and it'll take you through directly into the system and navigate you to make those changes accordingly. Um, and that saves time. Um, it means that you don't have to talk about those things during a meeting and then go back, go find the system, find the person, talk to them about what's happened. Um, you can actually just go in there instantly, um, you know, ask if this was a mistake and change it. And if it was, yeah, 
make make the accordion changes. So yeah, so actually using data to um, change your behaviour. Um, so the next one is data storytelling is the new language of the not for profit. And um, what that means is that really people respond best to stories. Um, so we're avoiding the whole concept of jumping straight into an outcome. So, you know, for instance, we should drop that service because it's costing us too much money. So the idea is, is to take the ultimate decision maker on that journey. And so we've put together a few dot points there. So you have your initial view, you have a look at the trends or the insights that you can see um, that are popping up. Um, have a look at how accurate that data is. Do you need to go back and clean that data? Um, was it human error? Was it um, something that happened in the system? Is everything right? And then being able to come to a final conclusion. Um, and I guess the benefit of that is, is that then you can have an open, transparent discussion with the workforce when you're justifying um, information and you've got the evidence there um, with you. Um, so this is a little quote that we've found. So in a uh, Dresner market study this year, they found that 75% of respondents found that data storytelling to be a critical or important to their business intelligence initiatives. And that just means that people responded really well to receiving those stories um, and having those justifications. So getting smarter about analytics adoption. Um, whenever new systems come into place in a business, it's very difficult to go through that change management process. Um, a lot of people can be very reluctant um, to take it on board. Um, you know, they might think that, you know, because people are collecting so much data now and it's being collected everywhere from our personal lives to our work lives, um, that they're being watched and, um, you know, they may not like that. But there are ways to get around that and getting people to understand that it's to benefit the organisation as a whole, that it's to benefit um, them as workers and also benefit, you know, clients and the services that you provide as well. Um, so... Basically, we're looking at um, how to encourage engagement um, and there are different ways to do that. So you can create almost like a gamification of it, um, competitions, um, you know, do it as like a group training thing. Um, and that obviously the increase of users means that they can then self-service so they don't have to rely on IT or managers to help them through things every single day um, and that everyone can get their answers quickly once um, everything has been adopted. So we've got a little thing on the side here, um, Makeover Monday. So that's just an example that we've used. of it. It's a UK-based website that you can find um, and that basically is a website dedicated specifically to help people uh, with change management um, with different um, products and software. So going on to how does business intelligence actually apply to not-for-profits? Um, we've had a look at a few areas uh, that we think that it applies to and what the purpose is. So there are four quadrants here. Um, the first one being transparency so that your organisation can be open and honest about what's happening um, in it. Um, so you would have to have all of the data there um, for planning as well. So talking about the future, what type of services you'll be providing, how many staff you'll be um, hiring, all of those different things, and also uh, grant applications. So understanding how having um, a business intelligence solution can benefit um, your competitiveness in the market uh, with any type of grants or funding application. And overall as well, just looking at developing a sustainable business model as well. So looking a bit closer um, with transparency, you've got um, staff productivity and utilisation. So making sure that your staff are working effectively. And that means that, you know, if you've got a variety of different services that you offer, that those staff are actually being rostered correctly, that they're working the right hours, that they're doing the right things. Um, making sure yeah, that they've got capacity to do those projects and then also being able to visualise um, all of that information for any funding patterns that um, you may need to show information for. 
So planning for the future, like I mentioned before, was talking about rostering and hiring. Um, also improve your management practices. If you've got an overall picture of what's happening in your um, business, then it's much easier to make decisions um, and develop um, strategies for what's going to happen in the future. So with grant applications or funding applications, um, you're able to access dashboards easily. You've got the information on hand. Um, you can, you know, screenshot it, print it out, PDF it, whatever, um, and it gives you a competitive edge and improves how transparent, transparent your um, organisation really is um, to anyone that you're applying to. And then having a look at um, developing a sustainable business model. So understanding how your work is structured, um, making sure that you can actually fulfil the demands that you've promised, um, and that the services that you're providing are actually necessary as well. Um, and that, I guess, flows on to developing um, a really positive work culture as well, making sure that people are really happy working there. Um, so we'd like to share um, a success story that we have um, with implementing a, a business intelligence solution. Um, and this one here was for a not-for-profit and it was a counselling service. So this particular um, company had a lack of transparency. Um, they couldn't see how their staff was, were using their time. Um, they didn't understand the um, productivity and that was due to a flexible workforce, which I'm sure that many services-based uh, organisations have issues with. So this particular one had a variety of different staff working different days and different hours. So some were working three days, some were working two, and they were working on totally different days from each other. So they the managers had really no idea as to how um, their staff were working. Um, their main objective was to measure their um, KPI um, and in particular utilisation and percent um, spent on actual direct services and they just wanted to know what, what the hours were. So their main discovery that um, they had from implementing this solution and being able to see all of this information was that they had 10% under utilisation within their service staff. Um, and what that meant is that that was 10 full-time staff equivalent of um, no work being done. Um, and that was not recorded work, it wasn't um, admin, it wasn't you know counselling or anything like that, it was just a open nothing. Um, of time um, and for, the, for them the approximate cost just for staff uh, was $54,000 a month so they made a huge huge um, ability to save money by discovering this information. So a few surprises that popped up out of this as well uh, was the fact that they um, noticed that their staff maintained the same behaviours once their analytics were implemented and that indicated that they were safe and comfortable with the data collection, um, you know, meaning that they did have a positive culture and that they were receptive of, of it. Uh, one thing that they did find which was interesting was that they had unplanned leave um, before their day off. So a lot of, a lot of these people uh, had their last day not on a Friday but on a Thursday and um, a lot of them were taking uh, either annual leave or um, sick days on that on that Thursday. So there was there was quite often a spike there, um, which you know you wouldn't expect to you know have Thursday as having a big gap. Um, they were also questioning the type of services that they were going to be providing and they had a few core services that they had and then a few additional ones and having this information um, brought to light that they could actually drop a few of their services and con um, condense and concentrate more on the core services that they had. So the insights uh, led to better business decisions in the end for them. Um, and, you know, that evidence um, gave them, you know, the confidence, um, you know, it quantified their, their gut feeling, their hunches about what, you know, could have been happening in the business and they actually had it there in black and white in front of them, which was really wonderful. Um, so the solution that we've developed um, that brought all of that success for this particular organisation, um, we've got 
detailed here a little bit more. So essentially, our aim is to provide transparency um, in all the areas that we discussed earlier. Um, it's a cost-effective solution as well, so we don't have a large upfront cost that we charge. It's a monthly subscription fee. Um, we aim to help, you know, develop a sustainable business practice um, for you by implementing this solution. Obviously, it adapts to the digital world um, because it is, you know, all based on, um, yeah, on software. Um, it's very fast delivery. So what that means is that we can implement it in a very short space of time uh, once we have all of the data um, that we need. And then basically you get it, you know, when on a daily basis, you get updates of all the information that's happening uh, within your organisation. And we can adapt everything um, to the NDIS as well, which does help out a lot of organisations. So the way it works is that um, we've got visual workplace management sitting in the middle and it pulls data from the rostering and payroll, the staff data and any production or billing data. So they're the main three areas. Um, and if, if all of those are three different types of software systems and that's, um, that's you know, easy for us to do, um, and we can do custom work as well if necessary. And some organisations have, you know, only one or two systems that we need to pull this data from, uh, depending on what they're looking for. Um, so, yeah, it's all very simple and, and quick. Uh, so we'd like to take you through a demo of what the actual software looks like. Um, so this is, um, this is it. So uh, we've got, we use Tableau, as mentioned before. Um, so we're looking here at staff utilisation. So the solution that we implemented for this um, counselling organisation is basically this is what they see on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can have a look from a top down. You can see the actual organisation itself um, and you can click on that and have all of the data pop up on this side here. You can have a look just in the department by manager as well. So we had several managers uh, that we were looking um, at, but today, just for the sake of the demo, we're only going to be looking at uh, Mark Cassidy's team. Um, so he's got a few people in his team here and you can see that we've got all the different types of um, things that they do on a daily basis and all the different days so you can you can enter here you can select you know how many days you want to look at whether it's a week a month just one day um, and the department the manager or even go down and drill down just to employees as well um, so you can have a look at the different events and that's pretty you know have a look at you know what happens in a day um, this has got your utilisation. So their target here is 48% as a general target. Um, they don't always reach their target. Um, you know, and if they do, you can have a look at, you know, what wonderful thing do we do on this particular day? Um, you know, why did our utilisation rate reach to 63% where, you know, down here the next day, it was at 36%. What did we do different to achieve this? Um, and then that way you can have those conversations uh, with the team and see how you can work together to improve those things. <clears throat> so we've got also un unplanned leave, which we talked about before, which, you know, in this particular instance, um, Thursdays were very popular um, and also percentage of contracted hours as well that were unrecorded. Um, so we have a look, we can go and have a look at an actual breakdown of the utilisation. Um, so the actual tasks that people were doing, so for instance, Anna here on the 25th, she did uh, nine hours of training. But then on the 28th, she had a joint appointment, um, she had non-client time, and then she did some other work. Um, and you can choose how, obviously, you put your tasks in. Um, that's all very customised as well. Um, and then you've got here your different utilisation rates as well. So what they are for managers and then what they are for um, the staff team as a whole. Um, and that way, 
the organisation can have that conversation from, again, the top down. So, you know, if the managers are having a meeting together, um, why is one manager doing really well, but the other manager's team is not? Um, you know, what are they doing that's really good? Um, do they have a way um, of talking to their staff that is, you know, perhaps a bit better or more inclusive and makes people want to work more? Uh, and so it really makes everything very open and transparent. So then we have a look at activity trends here. Sorry, I just have to wait for it to load up. And you can have a look at all the different uh, work events. So here we've got sick uh, leave hours and you can see here Monday is quite popular um, and then here Thursday and Wednesday. So that goes back to the different types of um, work patterns as well. So if you've got a lot of people who have their second day on a Tuesday, they're less likely uh, to take leave or if you've got most people who are working Monday and Wednesday um, then obviously you wouldn't have people taking leave on a Tuesday. So you can have, develop those insights um, depending on how your workplace works. And then also the different work events by weekday so all the different things that um, you know how many staff are working on those days. Um, and the different trends as well so it shows you over here. Uh, unrecorded hours, so this was the, the underutilisation percentage that we had a look at as well. So here we can see that there are a lot of unrecorded hours um, in this particular area um, and perhaps during this time the managers had a conversation with their staff about this issue and we started to see that it dropped down. And naturally these things start to go creep back up. Um, because of bad habits, but if you've got this information in front of you and you start to see that they have started to creep up, you can have the conversation here instead of way over here about what's happening um, because you do have these things update on a daily basis. So um, it is, yeah, you do have that ability to talk to these people. And then again, it goes through here. You can see, you know, Judith, for instance, on the 2nd of July, um, was you know doing lots of work and then you know what happened here on the 16th was she away was you know what what is that and what's the big difference between it and then between people as well you can see you know why one person is working really effectively um but then you know what's what's Jeanette you know what's she doing yeah and so going and having a look at uh, leave liability. So this is a bit of an um, issue as well where people like to hang on to their leave. Um, so some people like to take unplanned leave, other people don't take leave. Um, so you can have a look at how much that's actually costing the organisation. And there are some fairly standard patterns that happen like at the end of the year where most people do have a lot of leave accrued. Um, and then it's, you know, the majority of that is taken over the December and also January period, um, you know, during school holidays or Christmas break, whatever that might be. And then, you know, here we've got some people, you know, like to take holidays in the middle of the year when it's winter and they like to go somewhere warmer. Um, but then if you've got issues, you know, in April, say for instance, you know, that spiked up, um, you know that, you know, if you've got a certain amount of people who are accruing a lot of leave, uh, you can start having those conversations about, you know, what's happening, um, you know, can we try and minimise our risk in, in some sort of way. And so you can have a look at uh, what it is by hours and then also how much um, it's costing you as well. So this is workforce statistics is an additional um, dashboard that we've created. Um, this wasn't part of the project that we did for the counselling service. Um, however, you can see here that it is very useful. Um, you've got your attrition rate, um, you know, how long do people stick around for, what are their reasons for leaving as well. So, you know, there's surveys that you have obviously when people do leave and you can input that information in. Um, you can have a look at, you know, how is your um, workplace spread out in terms of age? You know, are you going to have a lot of people retiring pretty soon or is that, you know, you know, and if so, are you prepared to go out and employ new people to fill those gaps? 
what's the gender split, um, also representation of genders. Um, well, you've also got people, Torres Strait um, Islander and Aboriginal and then employees with disability. Um, so making sure that we've got equality in the workplace there. Um, and then, yeah, representation of genders and salaries and wage gaps and everything. So having a look at that um, and I guess being, you know, responsible um, in terms of an organisation and making sure that we're treating everyone fairly. Um, and this obviously makes everything very transparent as to what's happening um, in our work workplace. Um, so that's the demo. Um, so that's it for that. Um, we've put um, a few resources here just to, if you wanted to have a bit more of a read through, and uh, we've got a few, a couple of videos. So we've got um, Tableau have their um, business intelligence trends for next year um, and Gartner did a report earlier this year about the 2018 um, trends as well. Um, there's a bit more information here about the um, business intelligence journey and, and the details of that um, and if you want to watch a little video that details a bit more about what business intelligence um, actually is then you can have a look at this one here and a bit of reading as well for you. Um, so we'd like to turn it over to you guys and just see if you have any um, questions at all. Um, if you'd like to, we'd like to open up the floor to a bit of um, Q&A time. And um, yeah, so hopefully all of this has made sense. And if it hasn't, um, yeah, please let us know. Okay, got so them. we'll open the floor up now. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to put it into the questions box or you, you can raise your hand in the webinar panel and we can unmute you to speak as well. Okay, we do have one question that has come through to ask about um, the costing of the product itself. Olivia, if yeah. you can provide a bit of an overview on that. Yeah, so just um, we've got, because we, it's a subscription model, so we've got three different tiers um, and it starts um, at a per um, employee price. So it starts at um, $19 and then goes up to 29 and then uh, 49 so it just depends um, but I can put the pricing in um, as part of the resources at the end when we send through the PDF as well so we can we can do that if you like yep if you could share that out into yeah. um, the actual PDF itself I'll send it out yep. to everybody so that they okay. um, yeah, share it with their board as well because um, yep. the question do say that the board will the first question that the board will ask is what is the investment into yes. the actual yep. So, yep. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That's all right. We can't see anything, so I'm not sure if yeah, from our end, we've got our question. I oh, know the questions are coming through to me, so um, we uh -huh. haven't got okay. anything else that has come <laughs> through. Um, but but we'll just give it another um, 30 seconds or so to see if there's yeah. anybody else that has any questions. Yeah. Okay. Just while we're waiting, um, there, there might be uh, some people who have questions about how what we're talking about here relates to their individual um, organisation and the, the specific systems that they've got. So we're, we're happy to take um, inquiries after this. Um, if you can just contact us on the, the details that are on the screen there. And, um, and then you can share with us, okay, here's the actual systems that we use and um, whether they're cloud applications or on-premise software. And um, we can give you more information about what it would involve to, to get that data out. Um, it's probably also worth pointing out that for a lot of the uh, organizations that we do work with, uh, some of that information is not in a system. So for example, the work patterns of uh, knowing that Joe works Mondays and Tuesdays, um, and then half of a Friday, and then Kathy works um, five days a week. Um, they don't uh, often have a system that actually does capture that information. And we work with um, those organizations to uh, basically allow them to capture that in a spreadsheet. Um, to be able to do decent data analytics doesn't mean you have to have everything in a database or an application necessarily. Um, whenever there's a gap like that, 
um, we can just go back to trusty spreadsheets um, to make sure that you actually get a solution. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, Rowena has asked, how complex is the integration with applications? Yeah, so um, in most cases, that complexity doesn't really need to be something that as, as a not-for-profit, you'll need to worry about. Um, so our model is really, in most cases, uh, you just show us what you've got. And so long as it's technically viable for us to do the integration, that's included in the fee. Um, the reason we do that is we we understand that uh, the risk of you know how, how much work is this going to be and and the cost uh, to to get started can often be something that holds NFPs back and it's um, that provides up there's an opportunity cost there that we these NFPs will then go without and not be able to make good decisions um, so we're we're keen to support NFPs by uh, taking on that risk and that cost of connecting up to a new piece of software, so long as it's technically viable. And, and once again, we can discuss that when, um, uh, if you want to contact us directly and say, all right, well, we this is the software we use. Maybe we've already worked with it before and um, we can talk to, to you about uh, what's going to be possible with that software, or maybe we haven't and we can uh, go and uh, do some research, uh, find out. But in most cases, it's it's not actually that complexity is not something that you need to worry about as a as a client. Perfect. Rowena said that she'll get in touch with you directly, Lindsay, with um, to have a chat about the specific apps that they have. Cheers. Okay. Okay. Um, it looks like we don't have any other questions. Was there anything else you wanted to add, um, Olivia and Lindsay, before I wrap it up? Um, no, I think we're done. Um, I'll just add the pricing structure at the very end. Um, yeah, and so when you send through the um, yeah. the PDF to everyone, um, it'll be there. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks very much, oh, Olivia well. and Lindsay, for presenting today, and thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you've all learnt a lot from the presentation and that your questions have been answered. If you do have any other questions that come to mind later or any feedback about the webinar, please send it through to events at connectingup.org and we'll answer the questions offline. You can also contact both Olivia and Lindsay directly via the information on your screen. Um, don't forget that the recording will be available within two business days and a link will be sent out to you. I'll also send you the slide deck with the information that Olivia referred to earlier. So keep an eye out on your inbox. Again, thank you everyone for being with us. Enjoy the rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you all next time. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks, Thanks Tina. Tina.